Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with bolognese sauce. That's right, this video recipe is dedicated to the late, great Marcella Hazan, who for those of you that don't know, was basically the Julia Child of Italian cuisine. And this amazing meat sauce was one of her signature recipes. Although I'm pretty sure she stole the recipe from my grandmother. But since I can't prove anything, we're just gonna move on. And we're gonna start by sweating our aromatic vegetables. So in our sauce pot, we have a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of butter. And we're gonna put that over medium heat. And as soon as the butter melts, we're gonna go ahead and throw in some finely diced onions, celery, and carrots. And we'll give that a stir with our wooden spoon, the official bolognese sauce stirring instrument, except no substitutes. We'll also throw in a big pinch of salt to help draw out that water. And like I said, we're just gonna cook that stirring until they turn translucent and they're gonna go from looking like this to looking like this. At that point, we're gonna go ahead and throw in our beef. And I'm using ground beef. I got some beautiful local grass-fed beef. And we're gonna throw that in and we're gonna keep it right on medium heat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this for about five minutes, stirring constantly, breaking up that meat with our wooden spoon as we stir. And because we have a fair amount of those soft, sweated vegetables, this is gonna be very easy to get this ground beef in very small pieces. And when we have it down to basically crumbles, we're gonna go ahead and add our seasoning, which is gonna be very straightforward. We're gonna put in some salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and a little touch of cayenne. And then last but not least, some freshly grated nutmeg. And I don't care if you don't like it, you're gonna add this. This is a subtle but very important part of the flavor profile, so do not skip the nutmeg. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stir in the seasoning, and we're ready for the next ingredient, which is the milk. Yes, one of the secret ingredients in this meat sauce is milk. And I'm using 2%, the low-fat milk, which I assume will let us classify this recipe as low-fat. But we're gonna stir in our milk. That's gonna come up to a simmer. And we're gonna cook that until most of the milk simmers out. And I said most of. Do not be a hero and try to reduce this completely. You burn that milk onto the bottom, you are starting over. And by starting over, I mean, you know, ordering pizza. All right, so like I said, we're gonna simmer that until most of the milk's evaporated and it looks like that. At which point we're gonna add the next addition of liquid, the white wine, and a lot of it. I'm gonna raise my heat up to medium high. We're gonna bring this to a simmer and then do the exact same thing. We're gonna cook this stirring until most of the wine has evaporated and we're back to that kind of meat paste consistency. And just like the milk, if you go down too far, the wine will burn, so be very careful. All right, so let that simmer until the wine reduces. And once we've simmered off that wine and it looks like that, we're ready for our tomatoes. And I'm gonna use a can of San Marzano plum tomatoes. These are packed whole. So all we're gonna do is throw those in a bowl and use our clean bare hand to crush them into a puree. And yes, you could use a food mill or a food processor, but then you wouldn't be able to feel what I'm feeling. And I like it when you feel what I'm feeling. So we're gonna crush those tomatoes, we're gonna pour them into our pot. We're also gonna rinse out the can with a couple cups of water and add that in. And then all we need to do here is let this come up to a simmer, which I'm gonna do on medium high heat. And it's gonna look like that, but that's too high. So what we're gonna do is give it a stir, and we're gonna back that heat down to low, and we're gonna keep adjusting it to maintain that perfect, very, very, very gentle simmer. And then all we're gonna do is let this simmer just like that for a brief four to six hour period, or until it cooks down into a thick sauce that's just too good to be true. And you could probably get away with three hours, but the longer the better. So this is just one of those sauces that needs to simmer for a really long time on low heat. And while this simmers, if you want, you can spoon off a little of the fat that comes to the top, but that's between you and your cardiologist. I did skim off most of it. And as it cooks, that liquid's gonna slowly evaporate. The flavors are gonna concentrate. The meat's gonna get unbelievably tender. And about five hours later, it should look something like this. Or at least that's what mine looked like. And for whatever reason, if this reduces too quickly and it's getting too thick and dry and you wanna cook it a little longer, just keep adding splashes of water as needed. And obviously it's up to you on how thick you wanna make this. You could keep cooking this and make it even thicker. But for me, that's the perfect texture right there. And at that point, you can turn off the heat because your bolognese sauce is done. Although we really should taste it and adjust the seasoning. You may need more salt, maybe a little pinch of pepper, but taste and adjust to your liking. You are the Patrick Swayze of your bolognese and not go Swayze, point break Swayze. So I tasted and adjusted mine. And at that point, I was so ready to enjoy this with some pasta. Now, traditionally, this is served with tagliatelle, although I'm gonna use these mezzi rigatoni, which I think are the absolute perfect shape for this sauce. And you're gonna see why very shortly. And you know I like to heat my pasta with the sauce before I plate it. This sauce is just too special to just unceremoniously ladle over the top of some naked pasta. It's not a good look. So I mixed my rigatoni with my sauce. We're gonna plate that up. Maybe a little Parmesan or a little Pecorino Romano on top. Maybe just a touch of fresh parsley, and that's it. 
a fairly classic version of bolognese sauce. Just one of the great plates of food in the history of the world. And you can see here why I like these mezzi rigatoni so much. You can see how that sauce and all those little pieces of meat get inside the pasta. I mean, that's perfect sauce to pasta distribution right there. And the flavor, just beyond description. So anyway, like I said, this was my take on Marcella Hazan's famous bolognese sauce. And if you're not familiar with her work, do yourself a favor, check her out online and see why she was such a huge influence. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.